arbitrarily I get asked all the time what is the best design for a theme park you know how do you you know manage if you're actually going to build a real theme park and how far uh, the pathways need to be and how you organize everything so guests don't get lost now roller coaster tycoon I mean you're dealing with artificial intelligence and these guests trying to do their own thing but in reality some of the most common layouts of a theme park include the classic firework pattern where you enter on a straight line when you come into the park and then it spreads out into different areas um, sometimes people refer to that as a hub and spoke pattern because everything is radiates from the hub and then goes out into different directions um, a lot of parks have a lake and you have to walk around the lake um, Epcot is one of those parks where there's a lake in the back but then there's also kind of a center in the front it's more of a figure eight pattern um, some parks are completely freeform uh, and you completely can't find your way around unless you really know what you're doing but even those parks usually have some sort of circular pattern a good example of that would be uh, uh, let's see some of the Six Flags parks around the United States Dollywood's one of those um, there is a kind of a circular pattern but sometimes you just have a lot of dead ends uh, Bush Gardens Williamsburg is a good example of that too um, today uh, for this park in Roller Coaster Tycoon I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to build the pathways uh, and figure out how things so what I'm thinking of doing is building a train that goes around the entire exterior of the park um, but it doesn't have to be completely on the final edge like a Disney style park would be um, you can actually have the train, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle. That actually, arguably, will be more convenient for a lot of people, too. Um, but I also want to build kind of a bullseye pattern. So I already have my center circular path. But then I'm going to build another circular path out here around that. And then a final one even farther out around that. And for now, I'm just going to do a very basic footpath. And I'm not going to connect these all the way because I'm not ready for guests to use these pathways. I just kind of want to show for the purposes of this exactly kind of where they would be. And this footpath, it's not even going to connect everywhere. This is just a real simple idea of how far apart and how I would, you know, build these. So we have this one, which is, would probably connect down there. And then I would do one farther out, like out here somewhere. And again, I know that these pathways are not connected. This is what happens if you don't connect them all. You know, so. But this will just kind of give you an idea of arguably where the pathways will end up being in the park if you do this. Um, just make sure you do not connect them with anything. If guests start walking on these, they will get very, very confused and lost. And when you build these, you have to make sure that they also have connections back to your main pathways. Um, so you can still go back in. If you think about it, UCF's campus is kind of like this pattern. Um, but uh, it's a good idea to do that. So. That'll give you an idea of, you know, how to build a park where people will not get too lost. Um, and again, now you'd go back and, you know, actually make these pathways <laughs> connected. Um, you don't have to stick around for that. I'm going to do this on my own, but just connecting these uh, designs. and That'll help me, uh, you know, kind of plan the different lands in the park so I have a full park that has everything I want it to have theme-wise and everything else. So, Any questions about this, let me know. Um, but uh, that is the plan for this park. So. Thanks, guys.